Hey, in this video I'm going to share some tips on using Microthema in combination with Bricks Builder. So Bricks Builder is a relatively new WordPress page builder and Microthema is a CSS editor for WordPress and you can think of it as a universal styling tool for styling any kind of WordPress content whether it's made with Bricks or Gutenberg or anything else. Uh, so the main workflow is to use two separate tabs. So um, I've got my page that I'm editing here in Bricks. Um, if I also want to make style changes in Microthema, um, the easiest way to go to the page that you're already on is to right-click the Bricks logo at the top left, open a new tab, which will just open the front end, and then use the Microthema shortcut at the top. That way Microthema will then load the page uh, that you were looking at in Bricks. So one reason you might want to use Microthema to style elements, even though Bricks has styling options of its own, is that it's fairly flexible in the way that you can target elements on the page. Uh, so, uh, for instance, let's say I wanted to target this uh, heading to here, um, and there's a couple of other um, headings on the page. There's, uh, there's three on this page. Um, in Bricks, you would maybe um, uh, add some styling, and then you could manually add classes to, say, this heading and this heading. Um, to then say change the font size or color or font family or, or whatever it is. Um, and that's actually better than a lot of page builders I've used, uh, the system Bricks has for um, adding the same styling to multiple elements. Um, but you might still prefer to use Microthema because it's a bit more visual. So um, I'm going to expand some advanced targeting options down the bottom here. Here this uh, Microthema shows us the HTML of the page. Um, so we've got this heading here that we've clicked uh, and some options for targeting it. The same options are shown in this drop-down menu, by the way, um, but sometimes it's easier to jump to. So if I just noted that there were three of these headings. Um, sometimes it's easier to jump to um, a, a way of targeting these three headings um, using this panel here, because I can just look at the number three on the right here. Um, and then I could go ahead and uh, I'll just set maybe set the font color to uh, maybe the green I've seen used somewhere else on this site. Um, maybe it's that shade. And now if we look up um, at the, and then down at the other things, we can see that we've styled them all in one go. Um, and you can use this system for anything. So I could say, click on this heading here. And if I wanted to target uh, all four, I could choose that selector there. Um, so we've got a really quick way of targeting multiple elements. To illustrate this further, let's um, change these form fields a little bit. Let's just go back to bricks first. And if we select this form here, uh, we can look at the um, styling options for uh, the fields and we can see that we can set, say, the background color or the typography. Um, but say we wanted to add, say, some shadow, we wouldn't be able to add that um, because it's an inner, inner element in uh, Bricks Builder. We don't have the full set of styling options for some of the, um, the outer sort of components. So let's go back to Microthema. Um, and uh, to select this, I'll just click on one of them, and then I'll choose the option for all three. Um, and to include uh, this text area as well, um, if we hold Shift, we can um, actually uh, click on anything we want. We don't just have to look at whatever Microthema has, has identified as probably related elements. So we can, we can select all of these form fields here. Um, and then I could, uh, let's see, we can set, um, let's first of all, let's set, set the background color. Um, I'm just going to bring down the opacity of this. Uh, so it's kind of dark. And then so we still want the placeholder text to be visible. So I'll just make that a bit darker. Um, and by the way, you can use this uh, icon here to turn off the highlighting when you just want to see the styles without that distraction. Um, and then I could go to the shadow and maybe set the color to dark and I'm going to set the blur like so and I'm going to make it inset so it's inside the fields uh, hang on, let's adjust this a little bit take that down there we go, just a very subtle shadow and so we have a little bit more control with Microthema because whatever we click on um, we have the same full set of styling options for, for anything. Now, it's worth pointing out one caveat when working with Bricks Builder uh, specifically, um, and that's that sometimes the HTML that Bricks renders on the front end is a little bit different to the back end. 
So if I go back to Bricks Builder, um, the way to see the changes is to just refresh um, the Builder page. So it will reload uh, the Microsoft style sheet. Um, and this is what I was talking about with the caveat. So we see that the, um, the stylings worked for the input fields, but the uh, text area hasn't worked for because um, if I right click on this, hang on, I can try and do this with, yeah, inspect. Um, I'm just going to have my dev tools here. Um, let me just zoom in a bit so you can see this a bit better. Um, so the text area here, the HTML, it just uh, uh, there's no ID on the text area. Um, back in Microthema, um, if I click on this text area, you can see that actually um, on the front end there's an ID, and that's what we've used to target this. Um, so if you, with things like color, um, you might just want to live with that. If you um, want to be very uh, particular about things, um, you, we could uh, we could modify this selector. So let me just do that again. So I'll click on one of these. Um, I'll select all three. Then I'll hold Shift and select this element here. And then I'll look for some alternative options. So um, let's have a look. So uh, yeah, so this one here where it's referencing the text area inside the form that has an ID, um, but it doesn't require the text area to have an ID itself. So if I just update that and then go back to bricks and refresh the page. We should see it works. But um, with certain style changes, it, as long as it looks OK on the front end, you might be happy to live with that. Um, however, there is one um, intervention that Microthema has got, which I've added recently um, to help people that uh, are using CSS Grid, because this is one of the main reasons to use Microthema with bricks. Bricks doesn't have support for CSS Grid at the time I'm recording this. Um, and so uh, it's it's useful to use Microthema's CSS Grid controls when you want to um, have that extra level of control that Grid provides over Flexbox layouts. Um, so I'm going to give you an example of that. Let's have a look. Uh, down the bottom, I'm just going to add a container. So I'm just going to click uh, off this element and then hopefully add a container element at the bottom. Yep. Uh, so let's just create a little bit of space. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to, uh, with this selected, I'm just going to add some dummy content. I'm just going to add uh, a bunch of headings because that's quite quick. Okay, how many have I got? Uh, yeah, okay, that should do. So if you didn't want to use the default Flexbox styling for um, container elements in Bricks, uh, you could add some custom CSS via Bricks' custom CSS editor. Um, but because of the, um, at the time of recording, there's an issue where the uh, H1 is a bit different uh, on the back end to the front end. Um, any custom CSS you add to make the grid work on the front end uh, won't work on the back end without some, um, a little bit of extra work. And so what I've done with Microthema is I've uh, added an automatic fix for this. Um, so, oh, uh, also, so by the way, when um, when you when you want to the, to edit content in Microthema that you've just added in Bricks, what we do is we save it here. It can be a draft, that's fine. And then in Microthema, um, the quickest way to get the content, the new content, is to just click on this Go button here. What that does is it just reloads the front end uh, without actually reloading the the whole interface is a bit quicker. Uh, I'm just going to close this panel for now. Um, so if we select the container element like this, um, and sometimes, by the way, you, in order to select the container element, you might need to click on an element inside, and then you just click the up arrow to move up to the parent until the highlighting covers all of the items. Um, that's a trick because when you apply CSS Grid, it needs to be the direct parent of the set of items that you want to style. Um, so, uh, and what Maxima will do is it will um, create, it will suggest fairly long selectors in this case because it's including a fix to make sure that the um, the grid styling will work on the front end and the back end. Um, and so uh, we'll just go with the default suggestion right now. Um, and if I go to the grid options here, um, we've if we drag this here, I can create three columns. Um, or if I drag it a little bit wider, we can create four columns. And uh, I can, say, make the individual items, I can make them wider, or I can reposition them. I can move this down, down here. Um, 
you can play around and create basically any structure that you want. So it's a really visual way to create layouts. Um, so I'll just show you uh, a couple of these grid options while we're here. Um, if we want to, uh, say, add a bit of padding to all of the items, there's a shortcut for doing that here. We could create a new selector and target all of the items, but there's um, this All tab gives us a few shortcuts for that. So uh, I'm gonna, just going to increase the padding a little bit. There we go. Um, and then... Um, we can use row gap and column gap to create a bit of room. So I could say, I don't know, one rem. Uh, and then same with one rem here. Sometimes there isn't uh, loads of room like here, but you want to create a slightly more complicated grid. You can use this expand grid option here just to give yourself a lot more room. You might want to have up to 24 columns wide. Um, also, you can toggle this highlighting on and off. Sometimes you just want to see how the content looks by itself. So now if we go back to bricks and just reload the page, we can see if we scroll down that now all of our uh, headings are in the grid uh, structure that we defined with Microthema. Um, I'll just close this now as well. Um, so yeah, that's there's a specific um, intervention Mike Zima does here to ensure that your layout still works in bricks, uh, just because layout's quite a, the structure of uh, the elements on the page is quite fundamental, so it'd be difficult working um, in bricks if things were laid out on the page very differently to when when you're working in Mike on the front end. Now, I've spoken to uh, the author of Bricks uh, about this um, particular situation, and he said it's actually going to be transitory. Um, so uh, an, a future version of Bricks, uh, the HTML will be the same on the back end and the front end, so we won't need to do this workaround. Um, and uh, to help make it easy for people to uh, switch this off, um, there's an option in Preferences. So the option to, to make this behavior happen where Microsoft slightly tweaks the selectors it generates uh, so that that when you target a container element, it will work in bricks on the on the front and the back. This um, enables that, and that's on by default. Um, and then at, at some point in the future, if you do want to, um, if it if it's re becomes a redundant fix, um, you can just remove all of the, you can update all of the selectors to remove this workaround just by enabling this option here and clicking Save Preferences. So finally, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, global versus page-specific targeting in Microthema. So, um, by default, Microthema's styles are global, so they will affect um, elements across all pages of the site. But you can um, change this, so when you're first creating a selector, so say I was going to select this paragraph here, um, if I enable the page ID modifier, and the lock icon sh shows that this will stay on until we turn it off, then Microthema basically uh, prefixes our selectors with a page-specific class, um, and then we can be sure that the selector will only affect the current page. Um, if we already have a selector and we want to change it, then we use this retarget option here, and then we could enable this here, turn it on or off. Um, okay, uh, let's just cancel that. Um, so now in Bricks also, um, Bricks has a, a handy feature, something I mentioned at the beginning about um, targeting multiple elements by adding classes. So uh, let me think of an example uh, to use this with. Um, so say uh, the, the default targeting here is an ID, uh, but we can enter a class name. So I could say um, my custom my custom grid, and then save that. And then we can go ahead and save that change, in the new class, and then back in Microthema, we will reload the page again. And then if we retarget it, we can just choose an alternative in the drop-down list. So I can choose this one here that says my custom grid and then update that. Uh, and then if we were to apply in bricks, if we were to create another grid and we were to add the class my custom grid, then all of Mike Thema's uh, custom grid styling will be applied to the items in that container element. So hopefully these examples have uh, helped you understand a little bit about my, why you might want to use Mike Thema to uh, fill in the gaps occasionally uh, in bricks or, or any kind of builder or other tool that you're using to build content. With deep integration, that's something that we uh, sometimes add for, um, I've done it for Elementor and Beaver Builder and Oxygen so far, and that's where you can use both programs at the same time from a single browser tab, so you wouldn't have to remember to save your changes here and then reload the interface in Microthema. Uh, and so that's a nice convenience. Um, uh, it will come if people, there's enough people that um, find Microthema a useful tool to use with Bricks now. And so it's worth building this convenience for people. 
Um, it will probably depend on, I'm going to hold out until uh, Thomas actually does some changes to the, the way grid containers work, because I think some of the issues with the HTML being a bit different on the back end, on the front end, I don't know if that's a permanent feature of Bricks. Um, if it is, um, what I would do to make things more easy to work with is I would just uh, sort of remove, you still have to work on two tabs, but I'd remove the need to ideally, anyway, if I can do this technically, um, to have to save your changes and refresh the page and switch back and forth um, with, by clicking buttons. So you'll still have to switch back and forth, but you won't maybe have to click so many buttons. But then again, if uh, if Bricks is eventually going to have slightly more consistent HTML on the front and back, then absolutely I'd be up for uh, adding the same kind of integration I've added with other builders. Uh, so yeah, I hope uh, this has been useful. Thank you very much for watching.